Welcome back to this course on organic chemistry and biology and drug development. In the last session, we were discussing about um, combinatorial chemistry that is a technology which has been developed to produce a large library of compounds and then testing it through high throughput screening and the whole exercise is done to have a quick uh, to have a quick access to the heat compound so that the heat compound can be then then lead to lead and then lead optimization okay so this process is usually earlier days it was taking lot of time because the biological screening was taking a lot of time so the synthesis uh, even if you make few compounds per day or per week that would have been sufficient for uh, testing within the time frame by the biologists now because of the advent of high throughput screening that there is a demand that you produce lot of compounds uh, in in a particular day or two and then get it tested as quickly as possible because the whole idea of medicinal chemistry or drug development is that one should as there is failure there is a high risk of failure that one should really very quickly know what are the failure compounds which are going to fail or which are failing in the high throughput screening and try to pick out the the lead compounds or the heat compounds as early as possible without wasting much time and energy. Okay. So, towards that end this combinatorial chemistry was developed. This is basically a synthetic technology in which a large library of compounds are made. Basically there are two techniques one is called parallel synthesis and this slide I what is uh, now uh, shown here I have already shown it to you that in parallel synthesis each well this is basically a 96 well plate each well uh, there is a bead there are few beads and then um, you have produced a particular type of compound it is not that in a particular well you have a mixture of compounds. Okay. There are different there are uh, several beads but all the beads are connected to suppose if I take this this groove if I take uh, the this one this group will have will have ultimately in the final product which is represented by z1 but z1 is basically a combination of x1 y1 and um, that is and then you are adding uh, this making the hide and toys it's a it's a three step basically uh, it's a two step the first step is uh, that adding the y1 to the x1 and then you did some you do some reaction you apply some reaction condition like heating with hot 6 molar HCl. So, that this is a particular type of combinatorial chemistry where you are making high dantoins okay. and these high dantoins what I am trying to say that each well has only a defined compound and you know what is the structure of that compound. On the other hand uh, if you go to the the other technology which is called mix uh, mix and split in this case you get a larger library of compounds much larger library of compounds but the problem is that in a particular well or if you are doing it in test tubes or uh, your container will have beads where each bead is connected to a particular compound but you don't know that it's a collection of beads and it is a collection of different compounds, but only one thing you know that each bead is only connected to one particular type of compound, but you do not know which bead it is. Okay. So, let us start from there where we ended. So, in this uh, mix and split you take the resin bead uh, attached to the functionality and then you attach uh, you divide it into three pots and in, in this pot you add A you, and in the other pot you add B and in the C uh, in the third pot you add C. So, you have resin bead here attached to A, resin bead B and here resin bead is attached to C, but then you mix these two take all them together and then split. So, what will happen that in each of these uh, beads each of these beads in a particular well or test tube it will have 
A it will have attached it will have attachment to B and uh, uh, it will have also attachment with C. So, that, that means, there are beads which are attached to A, there are beads which are attached to B, there are beads which are attached to C. Okay. Now, you add you basically you have distributed into three again three pots or three wells and you are adding D in uh, in the first pot, E in the second and F in the third. So, in the process what you are doing you are getting here a d b d and c d here you will get a e b e c and so on. So, in the third one like you are adding f. So, a f b f and c f then you again mix it and split. So, when you split your each well will have beads which are connected to a d b d c d a e b e c e as well as a f b f and c f. Now, what you are doing you have again split it into three, three pots and then add g. So, when in one pot you are adding G, in the other pot you are adding H and in the third one you are adding I. So, what will happen here there will be 9 means there will be 9 different compounds attached to attached to the beads attached to separate beads. You must understand this that a particular bead will not have say A D G and also it is attached to B D G that will not happen because you are um, covering the functionality uh, whatever number of functional groups attached to the bead that are all attached to either A or B or C uh, when you started the synthesis. So, each bead is connected to one type of compound not it is a mixture of compound. Okay. So, now you have 9 compounds here attached to the beads here are also 9 compounds and here are also 9 compounds. Now, what you do you test these beads containing the compounds and see if there is any bioactivity in any one of these uh, wells or pots wherever you are doing the reaction. Suppose there is a there is some activity shown by this cluster. Okay. So, the next thing is that you do not know actually which bead is connected to what, but you, what you know is that out of these beads at least some compounds are bioactive. Okay. So, um, the problem now is to basically to know what is the compound attached to a particular bead. See you can individually separate these beads and also test it, T uh, test against bioactivity and then suppose I get a bead which shows bioactivity, but I do not know what is attached here whether it is ADG or BDG or CDG. Okay. So, how to do that? Now, you can say that I will take the bead and then detach whatever compounds are there. Remember one bead does not have only one valency, it is a polyvalent bead that means, uh, you had from one bead you can get uh, you can get several molecules of this, okay. but all are same compound. If it is ADG although I do not know when I take the bead, so all are ADG here. So, there is no uh, scrambling of the structure of the compound that is attached to a particular bead. But the question is the big question is how to know what is the compound that is attached to a particular bead because these beads are not colored it is not that blue beads are always having ADG red beads are having other compounds it is not that each bead is of same color everything. Now, you have to basically decon you have to deconvolute that you have a bead which is attached to a compound and that is showing some bioactivity. Now, the task is how to know what compound I have I have in the attached to the bead. Okay. How to do that? One way is that you break this bond between the bead and the terminal end and see the sequence of these different entities A D G or it is B D G you can check that, okay. but this um, if these are uh, some compounds which are not say which are not very easy to do the sequencing you know sequencing can be done usually on peptides and as well as for nucleic acids these are easier ones that you can do Edmund degradation or you can do uh, Sanger's method to know the sequencing. Other compounds if it is different types of compound entities A, B, C are different entities then it will be very difficult to really know what is the structure of 
the compound that is attached to a particular bead. So, what um, how to uh, how to know the structure of the compound attached to a bead there is a technique which is called tagging technique I will show you what is that. So, what you do that each bead suppose I this is my bead which has shown some no, this is the bead uh, to start with it is a there are I say that these are polyvalent that means there are a lot of binding sites here where I can add the uh, add A, B or C that is my reacting partner. Okay. So, what I do that when I have this bead I have the bead attached to a to a linker and that linker is distributed in two channels one side you have you can do one type of reaction and in the other side you can do the synthesis that is you are interested in. Maybe an example will uh, will uh, demonstrate it or you can it will be easier to understand what I am saying is the tagging method. So, what is done? So, you have a bead you can forget about the linker for the timing. So, the bead has reactive sites in one reactive site you are adding your A, B, C, D, E, F and on the other side you are adding something which is easy to which is easy to sequence. Okay. Suppose, uh, I, I have two in this case I just simplify it I have separated the beads into two aliquots okay. and in one aliquot I added glycine I am interested in making peptides. Okay. So, in one aliquot I added glycine. So, the glycine gets attached at the synthesis site and at the same time I add uh, it is a some bases in this case it is say C A C A T G. So, I add a base, but for for understanding you can say that I add something which is denoted as P 1 okay, here and here on the other aliquot I add methionine a different amino acid and I add another um, set of bases which is denoted by P 2. So, what will happen that this bead which is now can be represented that it has got glycine here and on the other side because I am adding glycine and then also I am adding this P 1 which is a combination of bases the bases that are present in DNA. So, glycine and on the other valent other hand you are having this P 1 and in this case in the other aliquot what you have you have a you have a methionine and here you are adding the P 2 ok P 2 is in another collection of bases ok. So, then what you do again you mix and split if you mix and split and then suppose I add again glycine here and uh, glycine here. So, what I will get because the I will get in one particular container I have two containers. So, when I mix and split so here the beads will have both the characteristics this as well as that because I have mixed it and then splitted it. So, when I added glycine what I will get is that I will have a bead and remember whenever I add glycine I add the same same set of bases P 1. Okay. So, what will happen now this bead will have glycine and then if it is uh, I have added another glycine and on the other side at the same time I add this P 1. So, P 1 will be attached to P 1 and in the other bead what will happen the bead which is in the same container that will have glycine and if it is had reacted if it has reacted with uh, sorry it is not glycine because I have mixed it. So, I also have methionine here. So, methionine and that will be attached to glycine and in the tagging side that means, my P 1 P 2 side what I will have here now sorry P 2 because methyl whenever I had methionine I had P 2 there and then P 2 will be attached to P 1. So, this is the scenario. Now, suppose I stop at the dipeptide say suppose I stop at the dipeptide stage. Okay. I see that one bead is giving some 
uh, some activity. Okay. Then I am interested what I have added here whether it is methionine glycine or it is glycine glycine. So, what I do because I have this I know that if it is methionine glycine I will have P 2 P 1 and if it is glycine glycine I will have P 1 P 1. So, I make the complementary base sequence and see which is which gets attached to this to this base sequence whatever is uh, represented by P 2 P 1. Okay. Because that is what is called primer that is why this name primer is given. What is primer? Primer is that if you have a sequence of bases you already know that and if you give the complementary base then they are going to go and uh, hybridize. Okay. So, if it is P 1 P 1 you make a set of um, set of primer one set of primer which which is complementary to P 1 P 1 and another set of primer which is complementary to P 2 P 1. So, now you see that which primer is is actually giving the hybridization and then if you see that the complementary of P 2 P 1 is is hybridizing with the bead uh, bead tagging site then you know that it must be having methionine glycine and once you know that then you can separately make methionine glycine and do the bioassay and you can vary now you, you know that the first amino acid has to be methionine. So, you can take different methionine and then other amino acids you can vary and then optimize the heat. Okay. So, I hope this is clear. So, basically what you are doing you are adding your synthesis uh, your compound which is required for the synthesis at the same time you are adding a, a tagging tagging um, entity in this case our example was a base sequence a particular type of base sequence because the DNAs are very easy to detect means the base sequence is easy to detect by synthesizing the corresponding primers and see whether it is hybridizing or not. So, from that hybridization result we can tell that what is the tagging code it is P 1 P 2 P 1 or it is P 1 P 1 and then you can um, or in the other actually other test tubes what we will have you are adding again methionine. So, it will be uh, here it will be the tagging code will be if it is um, glycine and then methionine. So, that will be P 1 P 2 and the other case is P 2 P 2 that means, when the bead is connected to glycine I know that the it is attached to P 1 on the tagging site and when I added the methionine. So, that P 1 will be attached to P 2 because with methionine I add the P 2 and then so you will get whenever there is glycine methionine here it is methionine glycine whenever there is glycine methionine then the tagging sequence will be P 1 P 2 and whenever it is methionine methionine the tagging sequence will be P 2 P 2. So, you see you can get four different tagging sequence attached to the bead and from the tagging sequence you can tell what is the peptide sequence in the uh, what is the peptide sequence in the desired compound. Okay. So, that is um, now there are different techniques this tagging techniques are, uh, are various types I will not go into very details, but I will show you another tagging technique eh. instead of having this uh, this nucleotides uh, you can bases you can uh, you can have other types of uh, tagging systems like in this case it is said that resin resin means the resin bead. So, if you the resin bead you know that there is a synthesis site where you do the synthesis and there is a tagging site where you do the tagging. Okay. So, whenever you add one component you have to add the corresponding tag. Now, this tag earlier I told you about the bases nucleotide bases uh, someone has devised this that you can uh, whenever there is um, a synthesis done you on the other tagging site what you are doing you are adding um, you are adding this nitro nitro benzyl benzyl oxy carbonyl and attached to a linker okay. and the linker is attached to an aromatic a substituted aromatic moiety. Again I repeat there is this uh, the bead 
and the bead has synthesis sites and bead has tagging sites. Okay. One more important point is that synthesis site is not just one, there may be several synthesis sites and there may be more tagging sites also. Basically, what you do when you do the synthesis, you maintain the concentration at such a level, so that uh, the synthesis sites are more or less covered, leaving the tagging sites. Tagging sites remember they are also reactive entities, so you have to be careful the tagging sites are left free. Okay. So, whenever you do a whenever you put a um, again suppose the synthesis site I put a um, I put A 1 okay. and in the tagging site I put um, this via this paranitro this thing the paranitro benzyloxycarbonyl orthonitro sorry not para orthonitro. This orthonitro is, a, um, is like the I gave you the veratriloxycarbonyl which is photolabile this orthonitro uh, benzyloxycarbonyl is also photolabile. So, if you shine light here, so what will happen that this goes off carbon dioxide is liberated, then uh, you are actually generating ultimately the aryl halide. Uh, so, this is the mechanism that you form this forms the aldehyde and this loses the carbon dioxide and finally, this aryl tag comes out as the uh, this is actually a benzyl system C H 2 O H. Okay. So, aryl tag I, we can simplify it. So, basically there is a linker which is photolabile which is photolabile sorry this is a photo no this is not right yeah I hope no still this is red I want to change the color. So, this is the photolabile group and then you have this aromatic ring this is a r no aromatic. So, this is a 1. So, this is a r 1. Okay. Now, there are other tagging sites here okay. and there are also synthesis site here. So, you maintain it in such a way that all the synthesis sites are blocked with are blocked with a 1 leaving and the AR 1 this one you maintain it such a concentration that some of the tagging sites are still vacant remain vacant. So, whenever you are adding A 1 you are adding this uh, this benzyloxycarbonyl thing with a AR at the terminal end uh, with a different AR 1 aromatic aryl ring okay. leaving some of the tagging sites still vacant. Okay. So, when you do the next reaction, so that means in the first reaction what you are doing you are adding A 1 and you are also adding A R 1, A R 1 means via this benzyloxycarbonyl okay. and then when you take suppose A 2 you are adding now A 2. So, when you add A 2 you add A R 2. Okay. So, A 2 will be attached to A 1 here all this A 2 will be attached to A 1 and this A R 1 actually ends there because A R does not react with another A R. So, what will happen because of some of the tagging sites are now free vacant. So, now this will be connected to A R 2 still some tagging sites are left vacant it is just a calibration of the concentration that will. So, this is little tricky that you maintain the concentration is such a way that your synthesis sites are all are filled up, okay. but your tagging sites the tagging reactive sites are uh, are still free. So, one site is one site is occupied by A R 1 via this benzyloxycarbonyl and then the next site uh, adjacent site you put a A R 2 when you do the second reaction and if you do a uh, third reaction you can put uh, you can consider because still some tagging sites are left empty. So, you can put A R 3 also. Okay. So, that is the situation now what uh, what is done here is that after the everything is done you shine light and when you shine light your benzyloxycarbonyl falls off. So, what you will get is the A R 
C H 2 you will get A R 1 C H 2 O H you will get sorry A R 1 and this is A R 2 C H 2 O H then you will get uh, you can get A R 3 C H 2 O H like that. Okay. Now, you do a H PLC you do H PLC and if you do H PLC uh, what will happen each tag is different. So, each tag will show its its profile the chromatogram okay. and depending on the number of tags or number of peaks corresponding to, to different tags you can identify what is the sequence of the uh, of these entities a 1 a 2 a 3 all these things. Huh? So, now let us see I think this is still not clear I will I want to make it a little bit clear. Now, in the bead again this is a peptide synthesis what is done is this is the tagging. So, whenever you add glycine whenever you add glycine. So, you have these are tagging sites. So, you add T 1. Okay. So, you add T 1. So, basically you are adding glycine. So, you are adding T 1. Then if you add because there are these beads are distributed suppose in 3 ports. So, in the first bead you are adding glycine and you are adding a tag T 1. Okay. In the second uh, container you are adding uh, what is there alanine and you are adding the tag, tag means representing the aromatic ring depending on the aromatic ring because orthonitrobenzaloxy carbonyl is common and then the link card is also common. So, what is uh, different is the substitution pattern in the aromatic ring. So, you add T 2 and then here you add suppose serine, but when you add serine you do not need to add another tag T 3, but what you can do you can add T 1 and T 2 both. So, what will happen here the bead will have glycine and then T 1 and this bead will have alanine and T 2 and this bead will have uh, because there are different valency sites for the tagging. So, tagging sites are also quite a few on the bead. So, you will have T 1 either T 1 attached or it could be T 2 attached to some of the sites. So, in case of serine you have T 1 T 2 in case of alanine you have T 2 in case of glycine you have T 1. Okay. Now, suppose I stop here I mix it I mix the beads and then I distribute that is the mix and uh, split synthesis. So, I can now mix it and then split it into 3 okay. and then I add another glycine. So, in this port what will happen because I have mixed all these. So, it will have glycine and whenever I add glycine what I do I add T 1. So, whenever there is glycine it will only have T 1 whenever because this is mix and split again I repeat each port now will have all the 3 components. So, I will have alanine here and this alanine will be attached to glycine, but the because I am uh, because I have added your so, T 2 is already attached to the alanine bead and the other sites now I have whenever I add glycine I add T 1. So, that will have T 2 and T 1 okay. and then I have the third one that is serine. So, I added glycine. So, whenever I added glycine because serine already has T 1 as well as T 2. Now, I have added glycine the glycine I add only T 1 ok T 2 T 1 let me see just whether it is correct T 2 and T 1 ok. Now, you see if you stop at the uh, if you stop at the stage 1 you have mixed it and I want to know each bead has what whether it is attached to glycine whether it is attached to serine or whether it is attached to alanine. How do you how do you decide you separate the bead and then strip of this you shine light. So, what will happen this T 1 T 2s will fall off containing different aromatic rings. Now, you push it into the 
your HPLC chromatogram. If you put it into the HPLC, you get a chromatogram, and then you match with with your you have a you have a uh, reference one that where the retention times of each of these tags are there. So what will happen now? Suppose a bead is showing, uh, bead is showing. I stopped only first stage. Means glycine. Question is whether the bead is attached to glycine or it is attached to alanine or it is attached to serine. How do I know? I just strip off this T1, T2, all these tags and then push it into the HPLC or GC. So, what will I will get the different that peaks for the corresponding to this T1, T2, T3. Okay. And what happens that in the if the bead is attached to only glycine, only glycine, I will see only T1 because whenever I added glycine, I had only T1. If I see that there is T2 all, T2 coming out as exemplified or as demonstrated by the HPLC, then I know that the bead is attached to alanine. If I see that both T1 and T2 are coming, then what will happen? If both T1 and T2 are coming out, then you, I know that it is serine. Okay. So, basically this uh, process allows you to combine this T1, T2 and T1 plus T2. You are not utilize, ut you are not adding another extra one here T3. So, that means, if you want to discriminate between three, three um, reactants, three substrates, in this case glycine, alanine and serine, you need two tags. One is separate tags for glycine, a separate tag for alanine and a combined tag for the T1 plus T2 for the serine. So, in the next one when you do the if you come if you carry on the synthesis for glycine um, you are adding a T 3 now you introduce T 3 a another tag. So, whenever you are adding the second glycine you add T 3 when you are adding the second alanine you are adding T 4 when you are adding the serine you are adding T 3 plus T 4. Okay. And if you make a tripeptide, then the when you add glycine, you add T5, when you add alanine, you get you add T6, and when you add serine, T5 plus T6. Okay. So, that means uh, you have made now how many compounds? You have made 9 compounds, but you have add you have used only 6 tags, you are not using 9 tags, okay, because you have a combination of tags. So, now suppose I see that in the bead I strip off all these whatever is attached as the tag and suppose the tags attached are here are T 1, T 2 and uh, suppose T 1, T 2 and I also see T 3 and I also see T 4. Okay. So, I stop at the uh, T 3 and T 4. Now, I strip off these. I take the HPLC chromatogram and what I see that I could see T 1, I could see T 2, I will see T 3 and I will see T 4. Okay. So, in the uh, so if I see T 1 and both T 2 because they are uh, they are involved only in the first step of the synthesis that means it must be serine the first amino acid because if the first amino acid had been glycine, I would not have seen the T 2. If I only see T 2, then I know that the first amino acid is alanine, okay. but I am seeing T 1 plus T 2. If that be the case, that means the first amino acid is serine. What about the second amino acid? The second amino acid, I will see what are my tags T 3 or T 4 or both T 3 and T 4. So, here I am seeing both T 3 and T 4, if that be the case, that means the second one is also serine. So, that means I am having serine serine linkage. Okay. And so, now I can develop a problem like this, suppose I see T 1, I do not see T 2, I see T 3, I am making the tripeptide now and then I see T 5 and T 6, T 5 and T 6. So, what is the sequence of the amino acids? In the first one I am seeing only T 1. Now, T 1 is given only when glycine is there okay. and then T 3 second one I the 
possibilities are that I will see only T 3 or I will see only T 4 or I will see T 3 plus T 4. Here I see only T 3. So, it must be glycine attached to T 3 is given for another glycine okay. and then I see T 5 and T 6 together. If I see both together that is the third step that means it is serine. So, that is the sequence of the compound attached to a particular bead. Okay. So, this, this techniques actually simplifies if you increase the number of amino acids, uh, but proportionately you are not increasing the number of tags, because what you have done you have basically it is, uh, it is a if you say binary system, it is a binary system that if you have uh, 0 and 1 but you can get a combination of you can have only 0, you can have 1 1 or you can have 0 1. So, basically very similar to that if you have uh, on the other hand suppose if you have T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4, T 5, T 6 then what will be the sequence of your peptide? It will be T 4, T 5, T 6. So, I get T 1 plus T 2 that means it is serine. I get T 3 plus T 4 that means this is also serine and I get T 5 plus T 6 that means that is also serine. So, that is the peptide tripeptide. Okay. I think natural chemistry, but there are I, uh, I tell you there are other methods of doing this. I just mentioned uh, two methods one is this primer based method where you add the DNA based sequences attached to the as the tagging and then finally, you add the primer and then see which primer is hybridizing with the with the nucleotide sequence that is attached to a bead as the tag. Okay. And the second one you are taking a photo labile uh, ortho nitro benzyloxy carbonyl attached to uh, through a linker to an aromatic ring. These aromatic rings are differently substituted. Okay. So, differently substituted aromatic rings. So, they will have different retention times. So, that acts as T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4, T 5, T 6 and the and the trick is that you use uh, two tags for three components that is that reduces the number of tags because after all that will be expensive if you need the similar number of tags. So, that will have uh, more that is economically more expensive than the uh, than if you have the a reduced number of tags. Okay. So, that takes care of the combinatorial um, chemistry and the associated techniques. And so, next we will go to the uh, some medicinal aspect, but before that we have now um, discussed the drug discovery uh, process in general, what is done, what are the different steps, how you do that and the second uh, thing that we did is the combinatorial chemistry that is the requirement for the day that how to get a large library of compounds and then get it tested very quickly and, and also how to know the structure of the compound that you are generating and that is attached to a particular bead. Okay. Thank you.